talking further about the subject, we'd like to thank you for being here, uh, you all, and especially PFP for having us not only today, but everything they've done to make uh, this week and uh, our work possible in South Africa. So today we're going to talk first very briefly about what we do, so who we are, and then have a couple points about financial literacy in South Africa, and then talk a bit more about our experience as, um, during our workshops at Blue Eagle High School in Cosmo City. So first of all, who are we? Uh, this is our team. So we are eight students, all from the same university. The first one started in late 2012. Uh, they started by helping our first partner in South Africa, who was Little Green Number, who works by providing uh, seamstresses with employment and allowing them to use old billboards to make bags and sell them. So they started trying to support them and finally, uh, eventually in 2014, the second generation decided to work more within the realm of financial literacy and developed a stockwell for these seamstresses to save for the education of their children and grandchildren. And now we took over, so we still work with Little Green Number on the stockwell. And we also, through Little Green Number, uh, were put in touch with Partner for Possibility. And we now decided to continue working with financial literacy, but also try to uh, tackle the problem closer to the source. So we decided to try to work with younger people, and in that situation, uh, Blue Eagle High School was the perfect match, in my opinion, uh, to try to reach younger people. A significant number of South Africans rely on other people to manage their money. Less than half of the population have uh, or use a household budget. Uh, only 27% of South Africans monitor their expenses closely and about half the population uh, has issues setting long-term financial goals. And finally, 44% of the population has uh, issues covering their living cost. And this comes from multiple reports from the uh, Financial Services Boards of South Africa in the last years. And when looking at this, we really defined the, the source of our problem as financial literacy. And there you can see the general thought process that we derived from this problem. First, looking at the problem, we tried to focus on specifically how this could impact the students or the learners. And here we see that we found that one main issue is that people aren't confident with their skills and aren't willing to try. And then we also saw that there's a big problem with the lack of long-term planning, which if you want to start doing something slightly big, slightly important, you have to realize you have to start early and small. And this was lacking. So then we decided to figure out our goal precisely and we wanted to focus on behavior, so here such as saving mentality, cost consciousness, and also long-term planning, but also to make it relatable to the learner's future. So typically social upward mobility and also the general well-being of the learners. And then looking at the problem and the goal, we tried to define our approach to deliver the best results we could. And this was done mostly by raising awareness and also focusing on specific financial tools. The first part, motivation, we chose because we really wanted to have something the students or the learners could relate to. And we were really adamant and we worked in the first session very hard to have them define their goals and try to categorize their goals in order to have a strong feeling of what the, wor uh, the workshop would be about and how it could impact their lives. Then the second session was saving and how they could try to develop a savings plan to reach certain goals or ambitions. So this was done mostly by looking at the different costs that were and expenses related to their goals, but also how long they wanted to achieve it. Then our third session was all about funding their expenses, financing, and how to deal with debt. Uh, this included, among other things, a further discussions about the impact of taking on too much debt, but also alternative ways of funding expenses, and especially in the case of higher education, uh, also how they could use uh, private or public scholarships and general government aid to help them reach their goals. And then the final part, which was most of what we did today, uh, talk, was talking about budgeting, starting with a quite basic uh, family budget, and then look at how the income and balance, uh, the income and expenses balance out, and look further into the expenses, try to prioritize and fit them in different categories so they could see where they could try to lower certain expenses to free out money and start saving, for example. And then 
all through these different, these four different um, workshops, we had three <coughs> guiding principles that we followed. And I'm going to talk quickly, uh, mention them quickly, and Jonathan is then going to talk more about it. Uh, it was first of all starting with a framework, then putting a lot of emphasis on group work, and finally always to relate it back to the bigger picture.